all the gorgeous faces. So we've still got, you guys are popular. I would like to introduce you to the dynamic duo of Avon and Travis. Avon, I asked Avon initially, and I asked, I suggested that we find someone else. We all know Avon and Travis um, from the audiobook world. They're, they're both experienced narrators with zillions of hours behind them. I never promised I wouldn't do it, Avon. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they've also been consistently working using Discord, and I get a lot of questions about Discord, and I'm not the person to answer them. I have tried it. I, I just, it, it just didn't end up clicking so much with me, and I want the real experts to be able to, I want to see it from two different people's points of view, because I think different characters and personalities will be able to get different things from it. And I've seen some friends flourish like you wouldn't believe. Um, Avon has become like a dynamo in production, thanks to Discord in a large part. I think she would back me up on that. Okay, so let's start with, I've, let me start with the first question. And since I've just happened to have you on the screen, Avon, I'll ask you first, and then I'll switch to Travis, and I'll ask you each the same questions throughout the call, if it's okay. Avon, how did you discover Discord? Who convinced you to do it? And what was your experience when you first, because everyone thinks it's difficult and finds it overwhelming. What was your experience? Um, so I was exposed to it because Kyle um, posted in the indie group um, that there was somebody narrating live on the narrator's nook and I arrived there and witnessed it and just immediately, you know, the, the sun beam out of the clouds, you know, that, <laughs> that it, I saw the, the potential of it and how amazing it was. And I was all over it immediately. Like not what, so what, much for what me. What attracted you though? What was not it? so much for me to um, narrate myself there, but to listen to other people that oh. just, was immediately mind blowing to see everybody sharing their process and and to see how people struggle with the same things and um, how people do things differently and how people adapt their own performance and their own technical um, yeah that it was very it was immediately illuminating for sure oh I see I never realized that so it was it was taking the the shade off of other people 's processes in the beginning for you. At that point, had you considered doing it yourself? Yeah, I think I went online like the next day or something, trying it myself. Um, yes, and, and, you and you're right. My productivity ramped up immediately in the beginning because um, it, was, it, it was the potential to, to work with friends, like to have somebody present. And for... for um, for performance we're 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 always in our own boxes by ourselves and we're we're reading to an imaginary audience but when you narrate on discord the audience is real right and they can communicate back to you <laughs> and so so you really are reading t to somebody real and i think that made a big difference okay i like that okay Tra yeah i never Travis? realized that about Okay, that's a good perspective. I'm going to switch to Travis now and ask you the same thing, Travis. And did you have the same story? How did you hear about it? What was your So impression? I first became aware of Discord being used for audiobook narration through uh, Jeff Hayes and Soundbook Theater, who, you know, do Discord broadcasts regularly. Um, Andrea Parsno, who also records regularly. Uh, Steve Campbell, other narrators that I was aware of and that we're friends with that we're using it. And when I first started doing it, I think it was in May of last year. Um, it wasn't really for productivity. It was because COVID had started and I was in a box all the time and I never saw other human beings. So I started my own server from the perspective of honestly having, having it feel less, be, be less alone in a time where you're not seeing anyone else in a job that's traditionally pretty isolated. Now, um, can I, sorry to interrupt, but can I ask, when you say you started your own server, is that the same thing that Avon did by going into the Nook? Or did you right from the start 
start your own kind of nook? Just I started my own. I started my own, which I think around the same time as the nook, maybe a little before. I or the, I, my memory's hazy of May of last year. It seems was like it a conscious choice now. or why? Yeah, why I, did you? My my goal was that I was going to record regularly and I was going to have a small community of people that I could recognize from day to day that would be able to drop in as I worked. Okay. Um, the productivity thing was a happy surprise, which you know retroactively justified everything. Um, but initially that wasn't what I had on my mind because I didn't know at the outset that it would make me any more productive. It was more like a side effect of having an audience. Okay. Um, so I think, I think I have like 600 members or something and people pop in and out. And so I record almost every day uh, for a good five or six hours in the booth. And it's nice to have other folks around and it keeps me on task. So did you initially advertise it? How did you end up with 600 members? Did you initially push the advertising on social media that you were going to be on there and it grew? I, I you know, do posts on Facebook and Twitter from followers that I already had. Um, a lot of the people like, people like Andrea and Steve and, and Jeff also tend to cross post each other's Discord servers so that other people get introduced to other narrators who are doing work. Um, and all of us do kind of genre fiction, fantasy, game lit. And so there's like a common audience for that, that is kind of hungry for that kind of content. So there's a lot of, I think, cross pollination in there just due to the kinds of things I am often cast for. Um, and also I think those, those audiences are predisposed to use Discord. There's a lot of people who play games. And since Discord's primarily use is gaming, they're already set up and ready to go. Okay, so that brings me my burning question. I'm going to get it out of the way and I'll ask you since I've got you here and then I'll ask Avon the same question. I can't understand. My time doubled. I was only on Discord a few times. Um, I personally realized how much I value being away from people by using Discord. <laughs> I love people, but I like it in controlled amounts, which is why I like Facebook so much mm -hmm. social media um but my production was double triple and i cannot understand why because i was distracted and there were people there it doesn't make sense unless that i mean sometimes i try to pretend that i'm on discord thinking that maybe it's just that like i'm a lazy cow when i don't think people are watching why do you think it works? It shouldn't work. So there's a couple of components for me. One, I feel if there's anybody sitting there watching me, I don't feel comfortable getting up and getting a snack or, you know, making some excuse to do something else because I'm at home. There's just <laughs> this constant low grade, not oppressive pressure to have my butt in the chair because I'm entertaining somebody effectively. It's like mm. having a guest over for dinner and you wander off and read the paper in another room. You just, you feel like you have that responsibility to be present. Um, the other is that I think that sometimes as narrators, we're really self-critical, often really self-critical, and there are maybe takes that are actually pretty good that we do over and over needlessly because we're just fiddling with a specific line. And I think when you have other people listening and you have the benefit of their responses, you are less likely to do that. I think it's kind of similar to if you're directed by someone, you tend, I think people tend to find that if they are directed to someone, they stop less, that they feel like they're more efficient. Same as if, if you've got somebody listening to everything you're doing. Um, I don't know. I, th I think there's just, I think that's borne out in direction too. I think you're right. I also think the snack component. <laughs> I know that was big for me. <laughs> might have <laughs> explained a lot. <laughs> yep. That's, that's a very good point. Thanks, Travis. Avon, what do you think? Because well, you what Travis said, chat with people. A... I've listened to you. You're chatting with your friends a lot and you're doing like twice the amount. I don't understand how it works. I don't chat terribly much. I'm in the middle of the road as far as a chatter. There's yeah? people that chat a whole lot more <laughs> than, than I do. And I still do the multiple takes and then I just get a little tense that I'm like, okay, now I'm boring everybody. But yeah, take six. Um, but all that he said, it's, it's a low grade accountability. Because you had an astonishing leap in productivity, didn't you? Um, I remember you posting about, or like mentioning that it was like 
quite, I've told um, you not to say numbers, and here I am like baiting <laughs> you with that. <laughs> well, um, Steve Campbell crunched the numbers right around the, that time, like a, a year ago, a little bit less than a year ago, um, comparing his productivity in Discord um, versus no no accompaniment and he, he you know he came up with that it was more productive even with this even with someone to talk to i'll go by that like i had other factors going on at the same time that increased my productivity too so okay okay but like it, it, it it definitely makes makes it all more enjoyable to not be alone with it yes yeah, see that's the part that i personally and that's why i think it's such like a like a individual thing because because that's the part that i personally realized that i missed that when i go into record is the only time i'm like alone alone you know i quite like that time and plus i was never the hang out by the coffee pot kind of gal at work so uh, i think a lot of people especially like you would be because with your performance past um, thinking of going in there and turning on the video and sharing your booth as as a performance that that you're performing your job and I don't think of it like that at all um, I don't always turn the video on but if I do I forget about it um, and it's just that it's just that you're sharing your work um, you, you're not obligated to entertain somebody or tell them a story you're at work and they're welcome to, to, to look and listen in. And, oh, I couldn't do that. And then, and you, and then there's, there's a reciprocal sharing of knowledge and feedback and camaraderie and understanding. Like I share a whole lot of struggle as well. It's definitely not, I'm not there to entertain. That's me. No. <laughs> and I don't do it to just, entertain either. I mean, I, is, I am pretty much on task when I work. I will chat very little, you know, maybe an aside here or there or, you know, funny comment or, but I'm not there to really chat. I am there. You're not thinking about the audience, Travis. Oh, they're there and I can see them all the time and I will read what they say. And sometimes I'll respond if that's on a punch, you know, but I don't stop and have a talk. I work. Yeah. And I stay yeah. on task to work. And we may, and we may, you know, trade a little banner before we start the day or at the end of the day, but by and large, I'm just working. Um, but they can toss out, they chat with each other, you know, and they can ask questions and then occasionally given an opportunity, I'll answer them. Um, I also show my whole process. My whole, my dog is visible at all times as well as my face. So you can see how I punch and how I deal with audio as I work. Um, so some people find that interesting, but I don't do the soft shoe, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, see, I think Avon's got it, put it right down. That was my problem. I mean, I did video the first time, but I was like, you know, two hours makeup, hair, and I'm on, you know, jazz hands. And I, yeah, I don't, I'm not good at that. I'm like, not good at that. <laughs> yeah, I'm an introvert. I'm an introvert. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a water cooler person either. So I'm not the big chatter at the, at the party unless I'm super liquored up. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that would be interesting discord. <laughs> oh, we've, I've, we've done that. We've done that. That is very interesting too. <laughs> I mean, people see you struggle. That's yes. for sure. And yeah. I, I know I have sworn any number of times, but I think that's somewhat expected. I mean, you try not to denigrate anything that you're working on clearly, yeah because who knows who's going to pop in but and it's also mean, not nice mean it's not sometimes hard and that sometimes there's stuff that you have to adjust i mean like anything there's there's going to be editorial issues that have to get fixed or some books are just better than others um <laughs> yeah yeah okay so i have a question i'll ask you Travis, and then maybe Avon, if that's, does Discord chat appear to the side like here so you can read or ignore at will? I remember a lot of beeping. Can you turn that beeping off? 
you can turn the beeping off. Discord allows you to turn off all audio notifications, which generally you want to do. Otherwise, it's really distracting and it can bleed through your headphones. Um, I actually have two iPads. I have an iPad that I read my text off of, and then I have a little one next to it that just has Discord on it. So I can glance to the left of my copy and see what's being said. A lot of people would use it on a computer screen, but yes, it has a, a little chat log similar to what you see in Zoom if that's popped out, um, which you can ignore or pay attention to. Um, I like to have it proximate so that I can quickly glance and see if there's anything I need to attend to, but I don't have to look at it. Okay, so I think a lot of people on here will, and I hear, I had it, I found it very easy to get onto Discord, but that was because I had Avon, and she held my hand, basically, before she got, like, as busy as she is now, so it's not because I'm smarter than everyone, but I know that a lot of people have oh my God, I find it too confusing. I get on there and it's too much. So if I were like five years old and wanted to go on to Discord, could you guys, whoever feels you know more comfortable, happy to help, could you guys explain why it is easy and where somebody that's brand new should start? Because I do, can I just say guys, just because I don't get along with Discord temperamentally, I think that every single person should try it at least once. How do you know if you don't like something if you don't try it? And the people that love it really love it. You know, I mean, look at Travis and Avis. Travis and, Travis and Avis. Travis and Avon. So, guys, who, who feels they would like to walk us, the five-year-old, through getting on Discord? Well, even you wrote a really excellent blog post that went through all of this and probably is maybe the most straightforward way to get to grips with it because she did she did an excellent post, which she probably has the link for. Is that right? Yes, I put the link in the chat early on. So if anybody arriving late won't be able to scroll, scroll up and see that, but anybody who was here from the beginning can copy and paste that again. Um, but if you were five, you'd be fine with it because technology... <laughs> We right? have a five-year-old, just ask them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, but um, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you have friction with technology, then you probably have friction with Discord. And, you know, I don't really, and so I didn't have friction. But um, that is the reason that I wrote that blog post, like to, to step by step. Like, here's how it works in the narrating uh, servers. Because there are a few the, things that are not intuitive, I suppose, if you're used to other social media. Is is it the same as when you wrote that post? Has it has anything oh, yeah. changed? It's the, yeah, same. it's the same. It's the same. Okay, so that it was pretty straightforward, if I remember correctly. So somebody else had another question. They said that, and and I'd like both of you to answer this one if it's okay, we've just done Avon, so if Travis, you could start. Other than productivity, do you feel that narrators benefit from using Discord in terms of furthering their careers? I think it can be a component. So for me, it's useful because the genres that I do um, tend to cross-pollinate between authors. Um, so since I do a lot of gamelet and fantasy, those kinds of listeners tend to constantly be on the lookout for other books of that type and in those genres. Um, so a lot of the people who drop in get exposed to books they might not otherwise have been exposed to. And I keep a list of all of the books that have been done with links to Audible so people can check them out if they want to. And if they just pop in, you know, they may decide they like listening to you and they want to listen to more stuff. So it is a community building kind of thing for me and from my perspective. Um, I don't know if that's universally applicable. If you're a nonfiction narrator, maybe that's not useful in that way. Um, although, although maybe it is. So genre specific, and yeah, I do, because a lot of gamers used Discord before it was even Discord, huh? Mm -hmm. So, okay, I've, even I've been cast from Discord, and even more so because you're in real time talking to other narrators, um, you hear about, oh, have you auditioned for that? Did you get that email? So there's a whole lot of that um, very immediate communication that I, I think that's really important. It's, it's much more immediate than Facebook um, because you don't, you don't think, oh, I'm going to message my friends about that audition that Spectrum just put out. 
but if you're here talking and you're like, oh yeah, I've got to do an audition today and everybody's like, oh, what audition? Oh yeah, I saw it, blah, blah, blah. It's how the conversation goes. Um, but, but there's a lot of things um, going on on Discord as well, like um, Andy Arndt and Matthew Lord Davies were hosting the Andy and Matt Have a Chat podcast in the Narrator's Nook and Gail Shallon and Brian Wagner um, we're hosting the Storylight podcast live in the Narrator's Nook, and lots of narr not not narrators, um, lots of listeners um, were were there to watch that be done live. Um, so so that's they're they're definitely furthering their careers through des through Discord. Okay, and then somebody else had Sharon. Um, I'll stick with you, Avon, since we've got you here, and then. Um, well, actually, I think just one of you can probably answer. Will running Discord cause lags or glitches with your DAW if you're using an older computer? Or would Avon or Travis, either one of you? I don't, I don't entirely know the answer to that, um, but I haven't noticed any. And I'm running a souped up older computer, a pre-2011 um, with, with beefed up. It, it has issues because it's old, but I'm that's where I am. Um, and I don't have any issues. And Discord has no latency. It's one of the, um, it's one of the beautiful things about it um, that, that, that you're live. It's, it's like Zoom. It's like having people in the room. Yeah, and Mike Karn says the same thing. He hasn't had any issues. I, I have a newer computer, but I didn't. Um, Travis, did you ever have any issues? No, and I'm running a pretty nice setup. Um, because I'm a nerd, uh, but I <laughs> would still not expect it to cause issues um, because the audio has already made it to computer. You're not going to, you know, it's already gone through the interface. It's already been consumed through your USB device. So the audio is already on. I, I wouldn't expect it to introduce additional latency. That's not to say there's not some circumstance where maybe it could, and then Macs and PCs do things a little bit differently, but I would be surprised. It's fairly light. Okay, so my next question for you guys is, I have two, oh God, I have so many questions. Okay, my next question is, um, getting permission from authors and publishers and indies, and are there any circumstances where you haven't been able to get permission or where it's been awkward? How does um, that work? You know, start with Travis and then go to Avon. So my genre specifically is well disposed to it. So I do almost all of my books live at this point. I do have books I can't, books that are secret, books that, you know, the release date or they're just not, it's not, they're not publicly known yet. So I just had to do one offline, but the vast majority of mine are allowable online. Um, and last year I talked to Tantor about it and got them on board and Tantor has started allowing us to do books on a case-by-case -case basis. You still ask for permission, make sure the author or rights holder on there and doesn't have an objection. But so far that's been fairly consistent ongoing too. Podium was already doing it. Um, and then small presses and authors are usually on board, especially given that nothing is recorded since it's all ephemeral and since it's not final audio and nobody sits there for the whole book. It's not like you're giving a book away for free. It's just a little taste. It's like walking by the booth while somebody's working. So, so in general, people are, are positive about it because it's, who doesn't want more people to be aware of your book? Yeah. Yeah. That, Avon, what about you? Um, what, what Travis said. Yeah. Um, Spectrum said yes. Uh, Dion was positively disposed, but said, no, not this time, ask again. And uh, the big pubs say no, which is fine. Um, have, you act have, Indies, have they actually said straight out no or just not yeah. been asked? Oh, yeah, okay. I've asked. Okay. And then um, Indies and authors are all for it. As one of the, something that's really nice is when your author is there. I mean... There can be downsides, but I haven't seen, I've never seen anybody like get in, get in where they shouldn't trying to direct. I've only I had, say it. <laughs> I've only had the, and only witnessed the experience where they're very passive and available, right? Like I did a duet with John Perala and the author was there for every minute. He didn't want to miss any of it. And it was just so great because you, you hit a typo or a missed word and you're like, 
hey, Martin, what did you mean to say here? And they're just there to answer it. It's, you, you skip the email later and you skip the pickup and you get immediate feedback, you know, wow, they love it, right? So, right. so that's, that's been really beneficial. I've, I've loved it every time that's happened and I've had several authors um, stay with me for most of the book. Okay, my next question, um, I'll start with Avon and then go to Travis since I've got you here. Um, is it like work hours? I mean, because I know my recording schedule, I now make myself record when I get up first thing and I've got set hours or I don't get anything done. Do you have like your office hours now? You log into Discord and you're like regular, pretty much the same time every day or do you find it bleeds into other stuff because you're hanging out with your friends or how much time do you find that you actually log in and just listen rather than recording? Because time is, you know, of the essence in this gig, like finding time to do things like brush your teeth, make dinner. <laughs> um. That's a multi-layered question. Yeah. Uh, I certainly don't set my hours to to make people on Discord happy. I work when I work, and that could be eight o'clock in the morning. Um, I mean, my personal schedule, I, I'd like to get done by two o'clock, eight to two, but it doesn't always happen. I often also do a late shift, you know, maybe even work until midnight. But your schedule yes. isn't dictated by how long you want to hang out on Discord. You don't find yourself using it to oh, waste time. No, 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 no. I'm not in the booth. Um, I'm not inclined to spend more time in here than, than I'm being productive. But I am listening to Discord a lot, like a lot of the day. You know, um, it's replaced radio completely in my life. And it's really cut into my audiobook listening um you know i always have i i'm always wearing an audiobook when i'm outside when i'm working when i'm doing anything with my hands you know i i i listened to 100 books last year well including the ones i narrated never mind um but i listen to a lot of audiobooks and now that i'm listening to other narrators live on discord that i i'm having a lot harder time uh, listening to finished books and that's what a lot of people say you know they're they're listening to their friends on discord instead of the finished performance but it's okay. worth it okay okay that's travis what about you i have really regular hours for the most part i get on every day about 9 or 9 30 and go till 11 or 11 30 take a long lunch and then i usually work from 1 to 3 3 30 something like that and i do that almost literally every day um and I'm, I'm just very regular about it. So I like the regularity. I like having the routine of it. I'm in there to work. I do my work. I take my break and then I'm out. So do you spend time listening to others then in other hours of the day? I sometimes do if I have the time to do it, if I have the time to do it. Um, you know, it just kind of depends. But for my core working hours, they're pretty it's much It's a set thing. Hours. So your schedule and, dictates Discord, not the other way around. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so the, uh, cause that's how, cause you hear, and we were talking about, is it clubhouse as well? I just like, I see all the amount of time that I'm tempted to go on Facebook. So it's, it, the thought of another social sieve, <laughs> you know, where my time, so somebody else has, and Mandy has been lovely. Mandy, I don't know if you're like in your COVID pajamas or if you're happy to be seen on screen, but Mandy's been helping us out with the overflow questions. Mandy's another one because they did like an old prospector voice. The only time I ever was able to log on and listen, they were doing an old prospector voice. I was a bit confused because <laughs> <laughs> I think I had to have the backstory on that one, but it was hysterical. Um, but Mandy had answered Gretchen's question. I'd be interested in what your guys' answer is as well. Um, have you ever had negative feedback or unwanted feedback from anybody um, when you've been on it? Or has it all just been people hanging out? What if you're a new person and you don't have a Travis Baldry, Avon Shore set audience of fans that love your books what if you've only done like three books and you feel like you're kind of like yelling into the abyss 
how do you get an audience if you just log on and jump into a room? Will people wander over and say hi or? Yeah, if you're popping into the narrator's nook or the haven and you pop into a room, other narrators are probably who's going to pop in first. Yes. And which is going to be your best first audience anyway, other people who know what you're doing, you know, right. and respect what you're doing. So I've, I've never had a negative experience. I haven't heard of anybody having a ne negative experience yet. It's generally really positive um, or, you know, just, or, or just non-intrusive, you know, at worst. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Non-intrusive. And I love the fact, so, okay. So I'm the narrator that's maybe done one book. I'm not a hundred percent confident in my skills. I'm just starting out. So now we've figured out from this call, it's not that hard to log in. You find a nook. You don't have to be able to create your own server, you know, right off the bat. You find a nook or a, a room. You go into it. You have a friendly audience, most of the other narrators first. And like any group, you make friends and possibly friends you didn't have and form bonds in a community, which is always going to help your career. Mm -hmm. And it's not think there's another... like Travis. Yeah. Well, there's another, I think, interesting side benefit, which is that I think a lot of people get scared about the idea of reading in front of other people or being directed, or you're going to go to APAC and you're going to go and do director's diagnostics. And you're like, oh my God, I'm going to be reading in front of another person. You do this enough and you kind of take the sting out of that. Yeah. Because you're just reading in front of other people and making mistakes and recovering. And there's just like that acclimation that you get. Do you think it's affected the product, the outcome of your work. Do you think it's made you a better narrator? I know 100% it's made me a better narrator because of listening to other people, like to be immersed in their, prog in their process. Um, I listen to Travis a lot. I'm constantly learning from him. Um, probably the person I most want to learn from. But I, I've learned about Aww. acting from Stephanie <laughs> and learned about male voices from Mandy and learned about... Um, meditation, all the whole different style of VO from Mike. It's there's, it, it's what I've learned from other narrators. Um, that that's what's really made me improve. Not the practice of doing it my, myself so much as, um, as as learning from others. And learning from listening to them perform, or and their process, or learning from them explaining it to you as they're going along. Uh, no, from, from witnessing their process, you know, with the inevitable commentary that goes with it and witnessing like where they have difficulty, where they choose to do something different, um, where they choose to punch and why you, you can compare like what you're doing in your DAWs. Um, it's, there, there's so much cross-pollination of information. Um, that's, that's been the biggest benefit to me. On the, on the other side, just if it increases your productivity and you're spending more time, more time on your butt in the booth recording, yeah. you're also going to improve faster because you're just doing the work. So Good you take point. those two things together and. I hate this. Every time Discord comes up, I end up going, maybe I should maybe give it another should. go. <laughs> I, so I'll say, I find that even when I, so when I have a book that I can't do publicly, um, sometimes we'll have like hidden rooms where, you know, you can set up your own hidden room somewhere. And even if nobody is watching, <laughs> there's something about being in a room that maybe theoretically someone could show up in, even if they're not going to, that keeps my butt in the chair. I think that's the element, the fear of getting in trouble. <laughs> because now that I'm my own boss, I don't have that fear. <laughs> someone else's disappointment. I just can't stand, you know, someone, someone else's disappointment. <laughs> That. I like that. Um, uh, yeah, and all those th people that say put your screen on a timer or turn off your social media and it automatic, those automatic programs don't work for me because <laughs> it's like the alarm. I set six alarms on six different phones and alarms every day. And every day I wake up and they're like, some idiot has thrown them across the room. Or, I mean, a machine is only good as a machine. You have to have a witness. <laughs> um, okay, so. We do have another question. Um, don't forget the 
Don't forget the screen share options as well, Michael said. Tell me about screen share options. He says he loves watching the process as well. Do you guys share the screens? Yes. 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 Um, and so what difference um, does it make? I wonder if like, I can show you what mine looks like. I think I might you, be able to. Yeah. So a lot of us are using a program called OBS that um, combines different windows from your screen so you can share your DAW, mm -hmm. you can share the video feed, um, you can share the book nope. cover um, in, a, in a prepared window um, that you can then broadcast on Discord. Um, try, or you can just try. straight turn the video on. Oops, I'm not trying to turn if myself off. If you up. <laughs> share your screen and then choose the window, right? Um, I don't have a virtual camera set up so that I can do it right now, um, unfortunately. I, if I had thought about it, I would have done it ahead of time. But mine's currently set up for, for Discord with, with screen share. And I don't think I can... Oh, wait, no, can I do a screen share? Straight up screen share? Let's see. Without showing every other thing on my desktop? Let's see. Uh, yeah, I can. Oh, no, I can't. I can't. I'm, it's disabled for me. So I, can I can't make you a I can't host. You. I can make you a host. And oh, I don't want to accidentally maybe mess everything up. <laughs> um no literally all you do is then just highlight next to me and make me a host as long okay. as you don't have anything like really embarrassing on your desktop i i theoretically should not because that's <laughs> what we with zoom can be <laughs> um, um and, uh, i can i can share my screen maybe yeah it says that i can share my no no you'd have to you have to you yeah, know travis would have to make you a host all right, let's see oh, <laughs> okay. oh here we go this is gonna work all right here we go so here is uh is that working? Can you yeah. see it? Yes, it is. So right. here's my desktop, and I have myself at an inset, and I show the book that I'm reading, and my DAW, and people watch me punch and do my work as I work. And oh, uh, don't you have like those people that like fancy themselves engineers trying to tell you? You're, I'm afraid to show anything sound wise to anyone in the audiobook community because you always get that guy that comes out of the woodwork that tells you that you're doing everything wrong. <laughs> No I've, uh, so far, that. nobody has ever nobody has ever given me any grief. Um, yeah. you know, in general, people are just interested to see it at all. A lot of people have no idea, especially if their listeners have no idea how this functions. Um, it's uh, what program I, are you on? I use Adobe Audition. That's what I ah. that's what I work in, and I have a, a whole process. Okay, I can hit stop share right and give this back to you. Yeah, all right, and then just and, uh, hover next I to my write, name and hit make host. And make host. Yes, ideally we're all okay. back to normal. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I don't think I would share mine. I tend to like, like I've learned, I don't even ever complain about noise ever anymore because the minute you can say anything, then that guy comes out and says, you'll never have true proper room noise unless your <laughs> studio is hanging. One guy actually said, hanging in the middle of the room. <laughs> That's like, I don't have time. Yeah for that so far all of the 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 folks who are in discord who are either narrators are i mean they're not going to say anything because they're going to show their own stuff working at some point <laughs> okay so i have another question um this is from sarah is it considered rude to just pop in listen for five minutes and bail i tend to do drive-bys of all my social media accounts but on discord i'm paranoid that people will think i hate their narration if i just check in and leave Happens all the time. All the time. All the time. Yeah. Yes. Nothing to worry about. Don't stress about it. Yeah. And also, because you're not really watching, you're narrating. You pop in and out of that screen where people are talking, right? I mean, I mean, I, I see people pop in and out, but it's just you just expect people to drive by. They're just checking it out or looking, or maybe they want to drop back by later, or maybe they're not interested in that book. But that's okay. Okay, I like that. So, do you find that? So do you find that your audience, I mean, do you always tell everyone I'm going to be in Discord today or is it just people know to look for you and you just pop in? So um, I have roles set up. So you can set up various roles in your Discord server um, so that people can choose what they want to be notified of. So most of us have a role called listener and people can elect to make themselves a listener if they want. And then if you, when you start narrating, you can send a note to at listener and anybody who has that role will get your message. And you can say, oh, I'm about to start up. I'm going to record, record for a couple hours and here's the book. And if they want to pop in, they do. And if they don't, they don't. No big deal. You just send the, send the message in a bottle out. 
I mean, why do it if you're not going to show off? <laughs> well, you can always make yourself a peach. You can get the snap camera, you know, and then just make yourself a potato or a peach or whatever. Yeah, somehow. The other not. thing that Travis is famous for. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. There he is. Oh, hey, you can read as a peach if you really feel like it. <laughs> That's a trip. Um, How did you do that? Uh, there's a, you know, Instagram filters they've got. They have a, yeah. a desktop application called Snap Camera or something like that. And you can run your video feed through it. And then you just click on the little dealies. It's ridiculous. But okay, that is something if I you're doing something funny or you just about. need a break. <laughs> I always yeah. think about that lady who got stuck on a Zoom call. She was like some manager at Microsoft and her kid set it up so that she looked like a potato and she couldn't <laughs> figure out how to turn it off. Uh, you better watch out because your daughter actually, from what you said, is getting to that age. <laughs> my, my, my daughter is way ahead of me on all of this. Yeah, they're technologically advanced and with a child's sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep, yep. So, okay, so it's a positive experience. It's love all around. Um, we've had Travis and Avon, and then we've had Mike, and we've had Michael, and we've had Mandy saying, yes, yes, it's wonderful, it's amazing, come join us. So it's not like in high school where you're not invited. I mean, they're obviously happy for everyone to join in. Are there any things you would, that people could maybe should not do, like etiquette wise? Anything yes. that's annoying. You know, there's always that guy in the office. What about Don't the make suggestions office? unless you've been asked, unless you've been invited to comment. About don't, people's narration? Don't make suggestions about people's performance choices or oh, the yeah. voice that they're using. I mean. That would be a problem for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> unsolicited advice is generally frowned upon. Usually. Exactly. It, it's not, it's not something that I think happens often, but yeah, don't, don't be the one that starts the trend. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I, I did have a, when I was in theater, an actor walk up to me and try to give me acting notes after a performance. So it wasn't <laughs> well received. Okay, <laughs> yeah, so that's bad etiquette. Um, anything else? What's the funniest thing that's ever happened in Discord? What's the thing you remember the most? What are the highlights? Ooh. Well, it's capable of, of more than we're talking about, right? Like it's, it's capable of showing two people live um, at the same time, you know, like I did the duet um, and other people have done duets live in Discord and it's, you're capable of unmuting multiple people so you can just have a chat, um, it, you know, everybody unmutes at once to talk. Um, it, it can also, you can bring in a bot to play music so for a while we were, um, anybody when they finished a book would, um, would pull in the bot to play a song um, to celebrate finishing a book together, right? That was super fun. And um, yeah, I guess that's my funnest thing is dance so, parties. My funnest <laughs> thing is always just losing it. Sometimes it's funny. Sometimes when you're reading and you mess it up, it's funny. You just make a ridiculously stupid mistake. And it's funnier if other people watch you do it. Yes. And so, yeah, giggle fits every once in a while. But, you Some, know, I can, good. Sometimes yeah, the content you're that alone, you're reading somehow it's... is hilarious. And that's the best when, when you're, like, not alone there, but everybody else gets to witness the absurdity or the hilarity. And you laugh together at, oh, my God, you have to narrate that. You know, that's super fun, too. For a while, we were doing games where people who were posting in chat would uh, try and make me laugh with GIFs. So if they could get the right combination of animated GIFs in the Discord chat to make me crack up while I was reading, you know. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> okay, now we've got Mandy. Mandy says that, um, could she please mention that it, it's a learning curve and it's frustrating to figure out at first but it's a quick learning curve and they're all around to help and don't feel bad if you can't figure it out. She says she feels like, and I've heard this from people, they come in, they get overwhelmed with how to navigate and they leave. Um, as I said, I never felt that. I found it very straightforward, but again, I was kind of spoiled because I had Avon there. I remember Dawn was there. It was like um, Michael Mills, as far as like bad etiquette, et cetera, et cetera accidental open mics, ugh. 
Mike Carnes brought up, and I've heard this before, maybe you guys can expound on it, sprints. What oh, is that? Right. How does that work? Tell me about sprints. Oh, right. How did I forget sprints? Um, because lots of us um, have discovered our own trends that we tend to be narrating at the same time. And there's typically four or five of us in the morning um, working together. And it's another bot that Discord supports that uh, was made for authors to track their word count and um, really focus, you know, for 15 or, or 30 minutes and be like, okay, I'm going to get my word count in this in this space and time. But um, narrators have adapted it to using it for our minute count. So there will be a series of us all narrating separately in separate rooms, but we can start a sprint that we all participate in. So it's like a timer. And then at the end, when the 30 minutes um, is up, we report how many minutes, how many finished minutes um, we, we narrated, we got in the can in, in that time. And it, it's, it's just another increasing productivity factor because you're in a little bit of a rhythm. Some people are competitive. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, nobody you know. Do Travis, do you do sprints? Um, I don't, but only because I'm generally narrating in my own server, which is kind of, which is not, so there's not people really narrating. Par so what I'm getting from this call is basically, I still don't like the idea of people in my face when I'm trying to do my work. Um, and I don't miss the people at the coffee machine, but I think that what is making Discord so incredibly cool and it's lasting so long and it's so popular and it's so appealing is the cast of quirky characters that inhabit Discord. So I don't think Discord, personally my opinion is still the same about Discord, but it's Avon Shore and Travis Baldry and Mandy and Michael and Mike and Don. I mean, who wouldn't want to hang out with these guys? Do you know what I mean? I think you guys are the appeal of, I mean, you've obviously formed bonds and become friends as well, but it's, it's what they always say about the audiobook industry being so nice and the people being so, I mean, talk about, a welcoming atmosphere and environment. There's not one person that's a regular Discord follower that's had anything like judgmental or if you're, you know, there's, it's just been warm and welcoming and we're having fun come along guys. Say that it has to do with personality at all. You're right that we've formed bonds and community and over shared experience, you know, that book when, that struggle series when um, but the what's true is that we're narrators so we come into it at a common ground of understanding um, what it takes what's going into it the work that it that it takes and we you know we have that understanding of each other and that's what makes it awesome yeah, I mean, it's guys. a microcosm of the audiobook industry. It's still a bunch of nice people. The audiobook industry is a lot of nice people. The audiobook industry is a lot of nice people, but would you want to be in every single one of those Facebook audiobook groups? Do you know what I mean? I mean, we're all kind of in them, but would you want to spend yeah. as much time as you do with Avon and Mandy and Mike and Michael? I mean, you guys well, have I mean, a spark. Be a really, there's got to be a really good benefit for anybody who's new to narration to be able to just hang out and watch people who have done her their books work. Yeah. You know, there's nothing like watching somebody work who knows what they're doing. Yeah, so and one, that's one of the people, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. One of the people said, it sounds like an amazingly, it does to me. It sounds like that office, you know, when you get that, like, I don't know where it is, like summer camp or that job in the retail store, and it's a lousy job and it's like a gross place, but all the people that work there are your friends. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like that job that like your minimum wage, but you really like going to work because you like hanging out with them. <laughs> I think you guys are part of the appeal. Um, I've got a question for you guys. Um, Travis, Harry, Harry wants to know, Travis, my own server, is that something you set up within Discord or something tech that you literally set up? 
It is something you set up within Discord. Video. You have to have you don't have to have any hardware. It's something you can just choose to make in Discord. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, there are services you can add on that cost stuff, but you can just make a server. And then you're allowed to share out an invite link to other people and they can join your server and become members. Okay, so you guys are ready for um, 23 people to join tomorrow? <laughs> I, we should probably repeat that the Narrator's Nook and the Haven both exist for people to drop in and narrate. Um, th that it's open to multiple people at any time. There's a couple people narrating there right now because I've seen the notifications flash up. It's not necessary to have your own server at all. Nope. Most people do not. But what mm -hmm. about the busy times? Because I'm in the UK and I record. I mean, lately I've been like trying to record from like 12 to 4 in the afternoon. But that's like in America, they're barely awake. So basically, I'll be talking to a tunnel, like all the time. It's always hit and miss. And yeah. there's people from all over. So it's, it's not are. like it's only U.S. narrators. There's so many other countries, other time zones. There's so. Yeah. Um, the, the links to all the servers that we've mentioned are in my blog post at the end. They were, in addition I, to, I, I was kind of joining and joking about 23 new people, but from the chat book, they're all, you will have 23 new people <laughs> tomorrow and possibly me doing a public domain book if I get to log on and do it. So, okay, guys. So, but I am, but I do have to come back to, I think it's the quirky character. <laughs> <laughs> that's the appeal because that's why I want I feel like I wish I could go back is you guys make it so much fun and isn't that the trick to doing your job is make it fun like, have fun <laughs> mm, I'm not making an effort to make it fun for other people I'm on the job I'm working and it's nice to have other people present and I appreciate it but, but you enjoy it don't performance. you performance absolutely you, I enjoy, enjoy it yeah, see, I know, and I never actually thought of that aspect of it, because you are right. Everything I do is a performance. I'm either performing or I'm sleeping. <laughs> so you're totally right. But I think you can inhabit both spots. But I think that I could never be a person that just gets on with my job and ignores the audience. That would and also I couldn't maintain playing for an audience like every single day full time I'd go crazy <laughs> playing to the audience isn't necessary that's something I never think about right I'm not playing yeah. to an audience I'm here working and yeah you're welcome to listen in my microphone is my audience for the most part so yeah um I bet you if you spent a, some time doing it, if you went through some sessions, you would just kind of like get used to the temperature of the water and it wouldn't be, you wouldn't be, it wouldn't be in the back of your mind anymore. You'd kind of get over that initial reaction just from repetition, honestly, because yeah, I know yeah. my approach to it changed over time. I mean, I've been doing, I don't know how many thousands of hours I've spent on Discord doing this, but I certainly have changed how I, just like my mindset about it. It's, it's just work now. It's just work. Um, it's more pleasant than doing it by myself, but it's still work. And it feels like I'm at work. Honestly, yeah. that's part of it. It feels like I'm at work. You know, a lot of times when I was working prior, it didn't feel like I was at work. It felt like I was just pulling some time together to get done what I needed to get done. But now I feel like I'm at work, which I like, actually. I don't know if I'd ever get, I think it makes me think of, you know how people do group things to motivate themselves? They'll go to like boot camp, they'll like seven of them, because if they're in a group, it motivates. Yeah. I play to the group. If I go to a group thing or a class or something, I will walk around, away with like 17 new Facebook friends and I will not have done <laughs> one bit of the actual work. And, <laughs> and I, and I'm afraid that that would be my modus operandi. Like, I don't know if the repetition would ever get me to, to work. I kind of have to be not able to socialize. It might not. And it, and I'm sure it's not for everybody. I'm sure people, for a certain percentage of people, it's just not going to be the thing for them. Um, yeah. But it's worth trying out to see if it is. Yeah. It goes back to what I said. You're crazy if you don't try. 
Because if something's that beneficial to that many people and you don't ever try, you'll never know. You know, you could be one of those people that loves it. So, I mean, again, you're going to have 23 people joining tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Travis and Avon. Have I left anything out? Is there anything you guys think people should know? Oh, also, please, can I ask you, I'll start with Travis because I've got you here on every call. We say, can, um, what would you like to leave the YouTube audience that's going to be watching this for the next 30 years? What would you like to leave them with in regards to? Oh, anything? wow. I'm on the spot. I'm on the spot. <laughs> Very Famous last words. Tough one. Um, <laughs> big heart. Love y'all. It's a great industry. See? Please stop by Discord. Say that's hello. why they love Discord so much. It's the quirky gang there. <laughs> Avon? Um, I think that the degree of emotion that we um, share as part of our job daily, um, we're vulnerable and um, you know, full of feeling. And I think that that enables us to get to know each other deeper and more rapidly than maybe anything else. And I really appreciate that aspect of the narrator community oh that's lovely fabulous you guys are wonderful thank you so much for both taking the time to come and join us you made a great team i think together you've hit every aspect of the subject and answered everyone's questions and i hope to see you around and maybe on discord bye guys thank you so much bye -bye. for joining everyone bye travis it was wonderful to meet you as well wonderful to meet you too Bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining. Bye.